This segment is sponsored by Richmond Pediatric Dentistry and Orthodontics. Our next guest is a brilliant student and is also considered a STEM phenom. Her passion for science started in kindergarten. By seventh grade, she was working on detecting Alzheimer's in MRI scans. She's competed in various STEM fairs and has won awards at five national events. She's in the process of applying for two patents for her inventions. We welcome Camelia Sharma to Virginia this morning. It is wonderful to see you. It's wonderful to be here in person. Yes, we had the opportunity to meet two years ago, I think for the first time yeah. in a virtual format. Yep. At that time you were uh, competing in the Madarva Science Fair. Camelia, I don't even know where to start because I have so many incredible notes on the work that you're doing in STEM. I guess let's begin with how you got interested in science, technology, engineering, math, and why this resonates for you. So I first got interested in STEM uh, for my project in kindergarten uh, about uh, which type of soil, which type of environment was best for growing pea plants because I was a super avid gardener at that point. Um, and it really blossomed from there, doing STEM competitions throughout um, elementary school and then getting more into it in middle and high school. Uh, so yeah. It, it, it grew literally yes. from yes. there, right? So you got yeah. involved and it grew from there. You're a student here in, in Central Virginia. Um, and this is something that really has been encouraged in you. STEM is first and foremost, right, in our, in, in, on our horizon in education, but sometimes students don't necessarily um, really gravitate toward that. And, yeah. and you see that, but you're hoping that that changes. Yes, exactly. Uh, it's really important that like kids know that you don't need a fancy lab or a fancy experiment to be interested in STEM. You just need to have the passion about a topic and really just run with it from there. Camille, some of the highlights that we gave in terms of having patents, doing work in the Alzheimer's realm, I think environmentalism and sustainability is very inter yes. interesting to yes. you, an area of passion. Working in these areas, you do have bumps in the road along the way. You oh, don't yeah, just definitely. set up an experiment and it works every time. Oh yeah, definitely. I've had to revise multiple projects over and over again because certain aspects weren't working, uh, certain things just weren't going the way I planned, and that's expected. You need to really just, um, you need to recognize that, okay, this is okay, I just need to maybe switch my perspective a little bit. And then in the end, you you probably get a better project than uh, from your original plan. Those, those adaptations are exciting yes, to someone very. Yeah, trying to prove a theory. When did you know, you, you talked about the project in kindergarten, when did you um, really engage with science and technology and, and how have you continued to pursue that? Because I think a lot of folks get um, maybe a little overwhelmed by it. instructors as well. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, the STEM sort of idea was solidified for me uh, going into middle school, going into the International Baccalaureate program. They really pushed STEM, which was really nice. And then it was further solidified uh, when I went into the Center for Medical Sciences at Godwin High School. Um, it's what, what I would tell kids who are feeling overwhelmed with STEM is just take it baby steps. Learn uh, just a small portion like the easiest kindergarten level stuff. And then you can build upon that when you find something that you like to do. And it's easier to uh, learn something if it's something that you enjoy. And Camelia, it's important that folks do that, that that really resonates oh, yes. too, because ideas come from everywhere. Yeah, so uh, my ideas from science fair projects come from problems that I see around in the world. Like for my Alzheimer's project, I saw a problem with um, the diagnosing process uh, for like my aunt had Alzheimer's. And then for uh, my uh, project last year about uh, ship holes, there was um, a problem with the efficiency and the amount of oil and fuel that was being uh, emitted into the atmosphere. So you really have to find a problem in the world and then you can just build upon that idea. What problems are you finding now and working on? So currently I'm working on a project for detecting skin cancer and, uh, and skin lesions uh, and 
that problem, you know. It, it like uh, currently there aren't like very good like they're invasive the uh, ways of detecting skin cancer. You have to remove the lesion. It's just not good in general. So uh, the, my idea is non-invasive, so it doesn't. And with the prevalence of that particular scenario becoming even more regular, right, with yeah. folks detecting, with it being detected, it, it need, you need something faster. You need something that's less invasive. So it's identifying and solving for that issue. Yeah, and it's also remote, especially with COVID nowadays. People don't want to go into an office. They want to be able to, okay, let me scan this lesion, see if I do actually need to go into a doctor to have it removed. A STEM phenom, and now we all know why. Camelia, it's been great talking with you. It's been good talking to you, too. Let's check in again to yes. see where this <laughs> continues to go. We'll do it, you know, maybe once every year, once, once every two years. That's a good trend. Yes. Great talking with you today. We know you have a very bright future ahead of you. And if you have something inspiring to share, something to smile about is what we want to know. Share it with us. All you have to do is email us at virginiathismorning at WTVR.com or visit our website. VirginiaThisMorning.com and click on the Something to Smile About tab. Richmond Pediatric Dentistry and Orthodontics sponsoring Something to Smile About has six locations in our area in the West End, Mechanicsville, and Midlothian. For all the information, call the team 804-741-2226. You can visit the website rpdo.com and connect with them on Facebook and Instagram at Pediatric Dentist Richmond.